The Promised Neverland is one of the most exciting new-ish manga of the last few years, especially within the shonen space, most notably because it bucks a lot of the trends of shonen manga and does a lot of things very, very differently, especially concerning its protagonists, its setting, its genres. Now that I think of it, pretty much everything. I adore this series, and until I recently started reading Spy Family, which I'm going to talk about in another video, this was my absolute favourite current running shonen-esque manga. But why? The Promised Neverland is written by Kayu Shirai, who is a mangaka that we actually don't know that much about, and it's drawn by Posca Demizu. The Promised Neverland is set in a eerie, twisted and strange place. It starts off at a paradise orphanage called Gracefield House, and it looks like an old manor house set out in the English countryside somewhere. It's a place run by a woman called Isabella, who the kids all just know as Mum. And there is a handful of children between the ages of zero and twelve who all live there together. Occasionally, a child is selected to be fostered, and they are removed from the orphanage, so it works like any other orphanage. But there are some strange standout things about it that you can see right off the bat. The very first is probably the fact that the children all have a massive number tattooed across their neck, like a barcode. They don't question this, it's just there. And another thing is the fact that every single day, these children have to take a test. They sit in this big hall, they put these massive headphones on, and they have a, a tablet and a... what's it called? A tablet pen. And those pens for tablets. Stylus. Got a stylus and they, they do a test and they do it really fast and it's drawn really dramatically. And the top three scorers of the test, the top three students, if students is the right word, are our three main protagonists. A girl called Emma, and two boys called Ray and Norman. All three of these children are 12 years old, and they are the oldest, and the smartest, and the strongest of the kids in this orphanage. In the very first chapter, though, we pretty much find out the big twist of the whole place that sets all of the cogs in motion. That twist is the fact that Gracefield House is actually a farm, and outside of the orphanage is nothing but a world dominated and controlled by really terrifying, monstrous demons. And Isabella, Mum, the woman who takes care of these children, she's under the thumb of these demons. She raises the children to be meat, and when they are ready to be harvested, they are sent out. All the other children and the child who is to be sent out are all told that they are being adopted, fostered, whatever. But actually, they're about to be eaten. This is found out again in the very, very first chapter, and the first volume of the book is like seven or eight chapters. This is what I have so far. I've read volumes one, two, three, four, and five, but I don't know where my volume one is. I read it ages ago, so. So we find out very early on the characters of Emma and Norman. How's it start? A girl called Bonnie, who's like six years old, Bonnie gets fostered and she's about to be sent out. But then Emma and Norman, our two of our three main protagonists, find out that she's forgotten her stuffed bunny. So they take the bunny to the gate, hoping to catch her before she leaves to give her the bunny, only to find out that there's a bunch of demons there and Bonnie is dead in the back of their truck. So, okay, they've just found out the big revelation, and that's where books, if you collect it in these volumes, books one, two, three, and four are about them trying to escape. They are trying to escape Gracefield House, find out what's actually outside, and what happened to the world? Because this is our world, this is not another planet, this is not any strange fantasy place, this is our world. And we know this because they have a library, and in the library are books that were published within our society, within our lifetimes. And they find out eventually that the latest book that they have, the latest publication, was 2015. So something happened after 2015 to turn the world into this place run by demons, where humans either work for the demons or are cattle for them to eat. So that's the basic setup. Gracefield House is a farm for these children, and the children want to escape, they want to learn about the world. It sets up this perfect premise for you 
to want to learn more constantly. In the first two, three, four volumes, there are constant twists and turns. A new character is introduced, children are always at risk of, of being farmed and taken away. The three main protagonists know the truth and they have to keep it a secret, maybe leak the information slowly to the younger ones, but they're young and they're afraid. And there's so much that is drip fed to us. There are so many secrets to discover as the story goes on. And it's a perfect premise to hook you. It, it, it sets up just enough information for you to want to keep going and keep learning more. Now, The Promised Neverland was turned into an anime. As most best-selling shonen manga are, it was adapted into an anime, and the anime isn't great, in my opinion. I watched most of season one, I think I finished season one, I don't even remember. And the anime, if you haven't read or watched The Promised Neverland, please read it. Don't, don't watch it. I go back and forth on these things. There are some anime where I actually prefer watching it to reading it. I'm currently watching Horimiya on Funimation and I've read a bunch of the manga and I actually prefer watching it because the anime pretty much trims out all the fat, all the stuff that I don't really like that's just extra getting in the way and slowing down the pace of the manga. The anime just chops all of that out. And then Attack on Titan, I actually don't think Attack on Titan is very well drawn and the anime is so beautiful I prefer watching it. So. I go back and forth. With this, you really need to read it because the anime is kind of messily animated and the way that the pacing and the animation and even like the design and the color scheme and the color grading, whatever, the way that it looks and feels and the texture of the world does not match the art that you find in this manga. Posca Demizu is an amazing artist, and I think a lot of their art is really lost in the anime. The anime has this weird issue with the characters having absolutely tiny faces sometimes. I don't know why it happens. The art of this manga is grotesquely detailed. Gracefield House is this beautiful place that feels so at odds with the world outside of it. The children think they live in this perfect little paradise. They're all friends, mum looks after them. And then when you see the demons, they are so frightening. They are monstrous Junji Ito levels of grotesque, twisted, the way that their bones and their skin is stretched and taut and their limbs are elongated and their eyes are popping out of these skull-like masks. They kind of look like the Pokemon Cubone, but in a really monstrous and terrifying way. And they have these rags that hang off of them and they're all different. Every demon looks so different and it adds to the spectacle of what are they? Where did they come from? Why does each one look so different in size and stature? Different eyes, some have two, some have three. There's so much mystery and the mystery is encapsulated so well by the art of the manga and the anime just comes off a little bit lazy and I find that this is so often not the case. So many anime do such a great job of adapting manga and this one just doesn't quite nail it. So if you're gonna pick one or the other, please read the manga. The manga also is very, very good at delivering impactful moments moments where a huge twist suddenly happens or a scary moment. Because this is, this is a manga that is quite often scary and intimidating and because of the initial Gracefield house setting, which is very claustrophobic, it feels like a haunted house horror kind of situation. And when the kids are scheming and then mum comes up behind them suddenly or they hear something and worry that they're actually not alone, those moments hit so well in the manga because again, Posca Demizu as an artist is a costume designer, a cinematographer, they are in charge of the way that things are delivered outside of the plot and the dialogue. They are in charge of camera angles. They are in charge of set design and space and how much and how little you can see. And they do such a splendid job all the way through. And the anime does not have that same impact. It is not as frightening. It is not as well designed and well paced as the manga, so. That's my argument. I've recently spent a lot of time with Kazu Ishiguro. I did a video on his newest novel, Clara and the Sun. I've done a video ranking all of his books. If you happen to have read Never Let Me Go, which is kind of his magnum opus, the book that most people consider his best work, this is actually quite similar to that. When I read The Promised Neverland for the first time, I really felt a lot of Never Let Me Go, but in a manga form, it, it is more fantastical. You know, Never Let Me Go is a subtly quiet and philosophical piece of science fiction, whereas this is taking that same setting and almost that same atmosphere at times and turning it into a really fantastical and monstrous romp. If you wanted something to compare it to, it's kind of like Never Let Me Go. Also, truth time, I never ever talk about this because, like, 
how many people who read love to talk about being writers, you know? Everyone who loves to read dreams of being an author, and I don't like to talk about that because it's so cringe, and then I... I don't know. Anyway, but, real talk, when I was, like, 25, I was living in Shanghai, and I wrote a novel. I've written, like, five, six novels, and, you know, I send them off to publishers, and then they don't get published, and then I move on to the next one, and I just do that, like, every year or two. But when I was, like, 25, I wrote a novel about a group of orphans who live in this house and get fostered out one by one only to find out that the world outside the orphanage is actually a bunch of vampires. And it was called Black Dog. The book was called Black Dog. That was the name of the orphanage. And uh, I had it all plotted out and I wrote it and I think I finished it. I can't remember now, it's been years. But then I read this manga about two years later and I was furious because I was like, oh my God, this is literally my book. I wrote this. That was a weird feeling. I'd never really gotten over that. By the way, I've also only read five volumes because I can't get hold of volume six right now. And I know that volume six is roughly where the anime season two starts. And so people watching the anime are now beyond where I've gotten to. I'm in book five. I finished book five and now I want book six and book six just does not exist anywhere. I should probably just read it digital. I think what makes The Promised Neverland stand out so much, as opposed to a lot of other shonen manga of today, and kind of symbolizes the fact that shonen manga is really stepping up and transforming at the moment, the thing that really allows The Promised Neverland to encapsulate that evolution of shonen manga in today's manga space is the fact that it wonderfully explores genre fiction in every kind of way. You know, if you're a fan of genre fiction, a lot of us are fans of multiple genres. We like genre fiction as a, an overarching umbrella, if you like, and within that, most of us, if we like fantasy, we like sci-fi. If we like sci-fi, we like horror, etc., etc. The Promised Neverland has it all. It is terrifying. It is a horror series, no doubt. It is an action series, and as it goes on, especially in book five, there is a lot of action in this. It's also a mystery. We have no idea what has happened to the world and what we are building towards here. It is definitely mystery-driven. And again, as it goes on, there is a sci-fi element. This is a future world, a future kind of dystopia. It's a terrifying place. So The Promised Neverland is a hugely exciting world to live in. I absolutely adore it, and I cannot recommend it highly enough. If you are watching the anime and you haven't read the manga, please do so. If you've done neither, pick up the manga right now. It is an absolute treat, and I love every moment that I spend with it. All right, that's The Promised Neverland. Give it a go. It's a huge amount of fun, and every book is a new surprise and a new revelation, and a new piece added to the puzzle. It really keeps driving you forward. All right, that's it from me. Join our Patreon if you haven't. It would help us out a huge amount. And as always, subscribe for books.